Turners. <clears throat> Pardon me. I'm all choked up over this. I'm Captain Eddie Castle and welcome to my shop right here, right now. We're going to talk a little bit about wood turning. I was setting up to finish up a project when I smashed a wine out of my thumb, putting the tripod up. That's kind of bad when, you know, some of the basic things get you and pinch you. But I want to wait a few minutes to make sure that the blood stops. Because I don't want it on my wood. Hard to get out. And in the meantime, i got a couple of things I want to talk to you about. But you know the deal. If we're going to do all this, you got to watch. I was getting ready to pull one pen off of the mandrel that I finished the other night. And I'm doing a lot of these uh, big type ink pens. Uh, using up scraps of wood I found around the shop as I'm cleaning out, cleaning up. Uh, and I found some mahogany a guy gave me around the hurricane. He lost it in his shop in Hurricane Katrina, which is 14 years ago. Okay. Uh, and I put it, brought it in, and it all went down on that shelf down there, nice and neatly stacked. We flooded about five times since then, but it's all been down there on that stack. And now it's all coming out, and as it's coming out, I'm thinking, what can I do with this? Well, they were six and a half inch long blocks by five quarter. Ah, oh, man, perfect pen blanks. Yeah, and I need to do more of these because I'm going to do a whole bunch of them for Freedom Pens. But right now, uh, I'm developing skills. Sorry, said that wrong. I'm redeveloping skills. Had a tumor, led to a stroke, led to losing my mind. Didn't have much to start with. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're coming back and recovering. Okay, got all the moves and all. Mem muscle memory is the most difficult. And went through a couple of years of theory until the doctor, world's greatest brain surgery, said, you know you got all this back, but this didn't come back. Well, it can't come back. It's going to be redeveloped. It's not that it pops back in. But then some days... I can tell you every work that worked on the job I did at 526, 528 Royal Street, 321 Royal Street, 301 Royal Street, 723. Yeah, I could you know all these jobs. I remember. I remember the job numbers and the people. But yesterday I didn't remember working for that company. So it happens. And it's good that I'm getting be able to reestablish some of these things. But I am wondering. I was quit wondering what I did. I went back to the pen and I pulled the blank off. I want to show you what I do after I get the blank off. Now to give you a little history on this project, I take a 9 64ths, they call them aircraft length, um, drill bits. And I get these at msc.com. I'm sorry, msc.direct.com. And I put a little Nolitron washer I get down at the hardware store so I'm not cutting against the chuck. And I put it in, and, and yeah, I got five, five and a half inches sticking out. Whatever a, usually have one up here, a refill is, and my refill. All right. I make it about a quarter inch longer or deeper than the refill. Then I will drill the block of wood on this drill bit at 200 RPMs, or the slow speed I can go. Drill it in there, and I have a block on here. And I've done these before. I call them 12 cent pens. We did them 10 years ago or more. One of them's got like a million hits on it. People are looking to see how you do a 12 cent pen. That was a lie. Con economy has changed. Things fluctuate. Gas was way down like $1.61 the other day. And things happen. The pens are now 8 cents a piece. Yeah, got a box this morning at the Wally World thing. My wife went and got me a box, but she got me six boxes of boxes of pens. So I got 60 pens to turn. I think that was a hint. All right now, I turn it and I'm having a little fun with it because when I'm getting it down, I'm having fun with shapes and colors and styles and ribbing. And although you can't, per, per, perhaps you can't see this real clear, but let's get it in there. There you go. These are three pens. You can see one, uh, the furthest one over, right here. That's really trim. 
then this is a moderate and this is medium. Um, and it's just how you spin it and how it turns on this drill pit, drill bit mandrel. And that's what it is. The mandrel, the drill bit acts as the mandrel. Now, I normally get them done five, ten minutes worth of work, but it's a good chance for me to practice with my gouge to do my roughing gouge, roughing gouge to do the planing cuts. Then I come back with my skew and I polish them out and take all the bumps out and everything. Then I put two little beads in with a little Cindy Drove's the detail tool. Then I burn in the burns with the, the wire, wire. And then I put a finish on. Now, I'm pretty careful. My dog let me know the mailman just walked by. Probably he's armed, so you know, we don't mess with him. Uh, but I burn in those lines, and then I put a finish on. And if it's mahogany or one of these other woods that will accept a good finish, I will start with my regular 50-50 death sealer. That's 50-50 is half sealer, half thinner, which is lacquer. And I like death because I've been using it for 50, 60 years. And I really like the finish. Now, I've got the, the sealer on it, and then I'm going to put a cup, I'm going to rub it out using a scotch Bright. All this stuff was right here. Uh oh, I cleaned off the air hose a minute ago, so it's right back there. All right, I take a scotch Bright and a scotch Bright, and then I put some CA on it. Light coats of CA, three, four, whatever. I'm sitting here. You know, TV doesn't work anymore, so I'm, I'm just sitting here waiting. <laughs> So I get the, the, the color on. Now, it's essentially done, but I need to put a little bit more finish on. I want to polish that a little bit more. So, and I'm doing this at about 200, 300 RPMs. I'm spinning it. I will take my Scotch Bright and Scotch Bright it in and just get it down to the, one of the finer finishes I can have. Now, this is only, no, end, no end on this. This is sitting pretty steady. Can we get in there and see it? No, not really. Not from where you're sitting now. Um, but this is running very steady. But it is still on a spigot, so it will stop. I can stop it right here. All right. I like to polish it out. And I do so with Renaissance Wax. I really like this Renaissance Wax. I think I got this at one of those wood thing stores that you go to. But it got all this expensive stuff that wood turned us all deep. Um, I think that's where I bought it at, and I do know I bought it in 2005. So this only lasted 14 years. The way things go away. All right, so I went looking to replace it. I found that one catalog for $27.95 plus four dollars shipping. Found another catalog $27.95. But if I combine it with other items, I'll get free shipping. But I get the other items up to 100 bucks first, then I get free shipping. Then I went to Amazon.com. <clears throat> yeah, that's where I found it for $25. And I belong to that black market thing with Amazon where you pay once a year for shipping. And I get stuff shipped here all the time for free. So I'm getting mine for $25. bucks. i am saving $275. $2.95 plus the freight or the hassle and it'll be here in two days. So when you're shopping for supplies and you say you got to do it on the internet or to buy the book, you can go to Amazon, look up that product and you might find it. Watch the quantities because we play in ounces, they play in liters or milliliters. Huh? Yeah, this, this is 200 milliliters or equivalent to 7 ounces English and uh, it's a beautiful product I'm not talking about price the product it's microfine very well processed wax and when I put it on you see how careful I'm about it all I have left are chunks and bumps left in here I mean it, there's no real stuff left and I just rub 
That's all it takes. Okay, you think this is brain dead, this is brain dead. And then I buff it in. Now, if it starts, the, the, the bit stops, I can always put a little pressure on it and get it to go. The, the I said bit, I meant pen. But I can buff this in, get it very uniform, very polished, and get it up, and then let it cure a little bit. And then I can shut it down. Take it, I'll let the lid just comes right off the, the lathe. And then this is it, it's waxed up. I can handle it, put the bit back in it, and all that. But then, uh, uh, the, the bit, I meant the refill in it. But then I can have a little polish left on it, and I can always polish this out a little bit. And I have a very finished, nice pen. And I saved some money doing it. All right. I'm bleeding like crazy. So I'm probably going to have to go get another Band-Aid. I just peeled the tip of the back, back out in the tripod. All right. But I'm going to work on that, and then I'm going to come and, and set up on that little jar, because it's time to put the finish on. Well, one more step on that jar. We've kind of came up with the game plan on how to finish it. Let's go over that. In a minute, because I've got to stop bleeding. We're back in here. I'm still suffering a little bit of bleeding. I do not believe I have to show you the smash where I tore a little bit back. I don't have to see, you don't have to see a picture of my bubble to know I'm stupid enough to get one. So that stands for both of us. I don't need to see yours either, okay? I've got this little jar project. You know that. I'm working on it. And the other day we thread it. Did a little hand thread, two parts. We threaded the lid and the base and now it's time to finish it well the base is not hollowed out at all but this thing goes together very nicely and it's time to get a little finish on it so it comes up really good and this is some, some basswood and it did get a little hook and warp to it but that's okay we're gonna live with it but in order to hold it I'm gonna grab onto the lid and my other jaws and I'll show you that and why but I'm going to need to press on it a little bit over here to stabilize it so it doesn't get spin and I don't want to crush it or damage the threads. So this is kind of uh, temperamental turning a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is get me a soft touch ready to do it. A soft touch. All right. We talk about this sometimes and guys say, well, we're looking at catalogs and I can't find a soft touch. Well, I don't know if anybody makes the soft touch. You normally have to build this on your own. And what it takes is a block of wood and a three-quarter ten tap. You see that right there? That tap is three-quarter ten. And I did that using the lathe to hold the, the tap to, to cut it. I've got a video or two on it. And then I have it cut three-quarter ten. But what do I do then is to get this true because there, there, here, there, 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 there. And it's going to go into the tail on the tail cup. cup. I'll show you that in a little bit. And to get it right, I'm going to chuck up a piece of three-quarter by ten bolt. I cut the head off of it. I got this where? At the hardware store. Three-quarter by ten. Have it in it. I'm going to hold it in my profile jaws. Right. And that's going to run very true. I'm out of that, Chuck. That's running very true. Now, that's going to be my mandrel for taking this and dressing it off. Let's say I want to make ink pens and I'm going to use my tailstock to hold the ink pen instead of the bushing and the knob and all. So I need one that's got a hole in it. Where do I draw that hole? Exactly dead center. How I do it? I put it on this and while it's spinning there's the three quarter ten. While it's spinning I can drill through and get voila exact center. All right? Now, that's for that one. And look, when you're making these these uh, centers, make a bunch of these uh, soft touches. Make a bunch of them. And they don't take a look at scrapping and even sand it out. It's just right off the corner of a piece. Now, I have another one here I'm going to use for this soft touch. Same thing happens. Oh, yeah. I made so many at one time I drilled holes in them. Just on the side, a little drill bit, and then I put a piece of wire, put them all on a string of wire, so I had them all hanging here. 
That was in the old days when I turned every single hour of every single day. Now put it on, and now I can take this, and you see I get a little bit of a, a little bit of wobble in it. Can you hold on? We'll get up close and so you can see that. What I'm talking about. You see the little wobble I have? Well, it will wobble cause a vibration when I put it in the, in the other side. So right now I'm going to shield up, put my safety glasses and my shield on, and trim this up and get this right, and then put a little bit of bold nose on it, not a point, so I can use it to touch against that piece. Then we'll go on a piece. Change bandages, pull the band-aid on it, a little wrap on it. And as soon as I pulled it out, I thought about first aid kit. When I was a construction superintendent, I had a big first aid kit on a wall in the trailer with a piece of tape on it that said, do not open. This is for emergencies only. And I got ridden up by a, 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 a like a safety inspector one time from the insurance company that said, that's not good. What if somebody needs an aspirin? Well, you don't need an aspirin for first aid. You need an aspirin if you drank too much beer last night. If you need a gauze bandage because you sprained your wrist while you were playing uh, football, none of that's first aid. That's other stuff. So I had a second aid kit, which was a Tupperware box with uh, all the well, bandages and uh, the, the aspirin and all the other little knick-knack stuff. They come in little packages that you could give away. Had them all there, and I said, I got a second aid box. Do you know, I caught more hell over my career about that box versus a first aid kit and anything else. So in your shop you should have a second aid kit. You see how that goes? To keep you from running inside and showing life. I got a bubble on my left hand, yeah. It's a lot better than duct tape and paper towel. Because that's how we fixed it for years and years and years. Good clean roll of duct tape in the job trailer all the time and paper towel and you can bandage up anything. I've sent people to the hospital with a compound fracture because we couldn't get an ambulance there and we duct taped him to a 2x4 to move him. Which you have to do when you have to do it. Alright, we got this piece. Now, we did this the other day and told you about it. Now, I want to hold the bottom get this right. I want to hold the bottom in this chuck. And this is using one-way strong hold chuck, my favorite, with profile jaws. Now, Let's go in close and take a look at this here. See these jars are smooth on the inside? Right, they're smooth and when you bring it down to the, the minimum size, you can make a little template of what it closes down to and, I'm sorry, it's right there. That's the template of what it would grab onto. I make mine out of Corian because it won't warp, crack and stretch and everything else. And you can get a rip of this from someplace. Um, I have this little template. I do that. Now, why do I use the profile jaws rather than the conventional jaws? Well, I've got a set of those jaws. Let me get them. We'll start this over because I'm going rang and like I always tell you, I answer the telephone if you need me at 504-715-0512. That's the number. Alright, this is the conventional stronghold jaws. Now, let me zoom in a little bit more so you get an understanding of what we're talking about. See those grooves? Those grooves, and I've heard it called the hold fast and all this other stuff, nicknames, these grooves are supposed to grab onto the piece that you're chucking and, and bite in. Okay, now this is essentially flat. There's no dovetail to it. There's no kick out or anything. It's flat. This is not flat. This is the profiles, and you can see it. it's smooth on the inside, there's no ridges, and there's a very, very slight dovetail to it, all right? Why do I like this one over this one? Well, they're made for two different chucks, okay? Don't get me on, you don't get me on this. All right, I'd like it, the preference is this grips nice. It'll hold nice. This grips great and will hold great. Why? Because, I'm going to zoom out here a little bit, I'm getting all that contact area, 
all that smooth contact area. And that's what I'm getting my friction, where I'm getting my friction fit and hold. I'm getting a much better hold and much better fit going to this. And my skew is sharpened to match that profile, that angle. What? Yeah. See the skew's got a little kick on it? Alright. That little kick, I've, just, I've, I've made it to match this. Why? Because that will give me the perfect tenor when I put a tenor on the side of a piece. Because I need that little detail. And I'm using a tool that I have sharp, that I already have, and I'm not going to go buy a dovetail tool to do it. You're calling again. Hold on. You guys keep calling, we keep talking about things. I love it. Just talked to you guys about drying wood. Uh, and some rough, rough ideas of how to dry a piece to keep from cracking. I'm going to put this in this strong hole chuck. And you see the little bitty gap I'm going to have when I tighten down? I'm not steel to steel going this way because I'm really grabbing 100% bearing on that base. Which is great because I can tighten it down and I won't worry about crushing it or mar marking it. I'm not going to even get a tool mark off of that. Now, that's why I'm going to go for holding this end of it. This end is screwed on, but remember, these are wood threads, and I just put them on there. So I'm going to protect the wood threads, bring them up, tail, well, revolving on way tailstock. And I saw these on Amazon a while back on sale. Really good deal. Or you can go to oneway.com and buy right from Oneway. Nice people, family. they got snow outside their door right now. A lot of it. All right now, put the one the soft touch in there. I use my lock bar, put it in place, and I'm bringing the lathe up a little bit closer. You can't see that. There you go. A little bit closer, and then I'm going to slowly bring in my soft touch. Not a lot of pressure. It's slowly bringing my soft touch. Now I'm shielded up. I got my safety glasses on. I had to do something about the blood getting on my stuff because this just keeps coming through the bandage. I'm okay. If I pass out, y'all call somebody. Alright, now, when I crank it up, watch what happens when I bring the tail stuck up a little bit. Contact. Now, I have got pressure on this thing, on this piece. This way. I know how deep it is. I got a mark over here. And from that mark, I'm going to go ahead and round this out a little bit. But, and I do this to show you why we have these rigs and what we do with these things. I want to do this because when I round this, if I'm putting that pressure cutting around this way, I could pry it off those threads and ruin them. If I'm cutting around this way, I could cantilever them and, or spin them out, get over an overbite. So this is to help me hold it and keep it from getting damaged while I make it beautiful. Got it? Got it. Sometimes I got to learn how to chew gun and walk at the same time, but I've got to tell you, I want to protect these threads, these threads, and I want to increase it a little bit where it's protected. I want to bring out some thread saver fabric. You see it? It's got that little quilting on it. Um, I get this by the roll, what my wife does. She gets it in big packs from Walmart and Kmart and places like that. Um, it's a certain type of tissue. And I think it's called toilet tissue, a TP. I can put that in there. What did that do just now? That just tightened up the joint between these two a little bit. Made it to where it won't back off a little. And it's about a quarter of a turn out of, out of round. But it's going to hold it better than being wood to wood. And I don't have a chance of breaking it up. One more tip. Here's the deal. I think I just did a cut. And you didn't see it because I didn't have the computer turned on. So let me try it one more time. It shields up. I'm going to make this pass again. As you can see, I got a good sharp edge on this. I'm going to pass it around and do a clean cut. Shields up. That's the cut I was telling you about. Good and clean, no tears, 
no scraping anything up. That's good. That's a very good smooth cut. Now I'm going to lay down the side a little bit from the top to the bottom, put them together, and then that one that's going to be my fixed dimension for shape bottom. Shields up. Do not cut the chuck. Chuck, chuck, bull puck, blah, blah, blah. Oh, no. don't cut the chuck. This is a good finish. Now I would start saying the 80 grit when I sand it down and I want to sand this area on this side with the lid and remember that when I shape the bottom because I don't want to change the shape of this part right here. That This is this is a done deal. This is sweet meat right here. This is I don't want to ever cross this line again because then I'm going to pay for it. Pay for it dearly. So now I'm going to move my my rest back a little bit. Can you get over there and see that? There you go. Alright, I'm going to move my rest back a little bit and then I'm going to round that top a little, a little and I'm going to have something ready to sand. I've moved my soft touch back. Went over and cleaned up the ed edge of my tool again. One quick pass with the Blackhawk rig and I can come back and I know I put the exact same cut in the exact same layout, exact same place, and I threw very little steel on the floor. Because I got to buy the steel. Shields up. Let's go back to it. For this cutter, my tool rest is too low. See, I'm leaving that button. I want to come up half the distance of that button, lock it back down again. Way I'll cross it center. Shield up.
Okay, the back, the camera up might for it to focus out, but I got one little bit of bump right there, but it's not a depression. It's just a little bit of rise, and I can work with that. But I work with that with sandpaper. God's fixed for everything. I want to sand this out, and I I really do like sanding pads to do this, and I'm not going to put I, an isolator between because I want to keep all the straight surfaces surfaces straight. So I'm going to my shop-made self-propelled sander pad. Now, this you make it yourself. Here, here's the deal. That is a stick. That's a 45 degree angle on this end. It's a 90 degree angle on that end. It's got a rare earth magnet in the bottom of it, so when you put the piece in it, it goes in and it snaps. I had a guy call me and said I sent him a magnet that didn't work. I sent him a replacement for it. He said that one didn't work either. Then he found out he got the really, really, really cheap pad thing from Wally World, and that wasn't made of steel. So the magnet wouldn't work. That's like a guy I used to fish with put magnetic, had magnetic stickers made from the side of his aluminum bass boat. And then he was telling me he had to glue them on. Uh, yep, you sure did. Let's go to sanding here. I'm going to start with an 80 grit. Why 80? Because it'll cut nicer and everything will be the same uniform when I get the uniform grit when I get to putting the finish on. If I, if I skip a grit or go in a rush, people say, oh, I can turn 320, 400, I can cut 300, 400. That's a nice story, but you really can't. Uh, you can't cut to a sanded finish, you cut to a cut finish. I'm going to take this and work it down a little bit. Again, I'm going to not break this corner because I want it to be square. Then I'm going to flip it around and sand the side dead flat. Again, with 80 grit paper to sit Self-propelled sander. The bearing kit, I sell them at $10. You only get two of them uh, because if you're going deep into the bottom of a bowl or whatever, you just want to be able to flip it over and go straight into the bottom of that bowl. The bulky expense on sanding is right here. I use papers, flexes, pads, all this by Vince Welch at Vince's Wooden Wonders. Um, and don't get knocked off by somebody playing with his name. If it ain't a Vince's Wooden Wonders product, it ain't a Vince's Wooden Wonders product. Gee, that's I can make slogans out of that. I'm going to go from 180, and I'm going to step up to 120. I don't want to skip a grit. I got half of 80 is 40. 40 plus 80 is 120. At least that's what it used to be. So the new math came out again. I'm going to go back in here and go right back to where I was before. I'm going to stand that. I know the paper's working because I got sawdust. That's the key thing. I got. I have sawdust. Then I'm going to come around, note how complex this is, and I can flip around and do this nose just like that. As I move to the outside contact, I can keep that sharp, sharp corner I want right there, and then work on around. And I'm crossing the center, so there's no dot or anything left. So we're all on page one. I sand it to 320 using the disc, which kept sharp, clean lines. Then I pulled out a little 400, and I'm going to lap these things. I don't want to break this corner. I want it to. I got a straight, nice corner there. I don't want to. I want to keep that. That's very important to the reflectivity of the piece. Now I'm going to take this to 400, and I tell you what. That is great. There are no depressions, uh, barks, tears. And I want you to see this. You have to understand this. It's not what I can do. It's what you can do. There's a little bird right there at the top. And I'm going to buff that back out a little bit with 400. There are no tears in this. So this piece right here is acceptable for a sealer or 
uh, CA or anything else, I'd like to seal it because I think I'm going to get it's going to get a lot of wear and tear, people twisting the part and all that. So I'm going to take care of the little button and then I'm going to put a little sealer on it. I often wish I had the smarts enough to turn the button on when I press it. Um, but this is my 5050 depth lacquer sanding sealer. You can get it at Amazon, PPG paint stores, and some Ace Hardware stores will order it in for you. But the first thing it'll tell you is use this other brand, it's just as good. Alright, I'm pretty good about this. It's not just as good. When I tell you I get my sandpaper from Vince the Wooden Wonders, it's because Vince knows sandpaper. And he's a wood turner. When I get my bottle stoppers from Ruth Niles at Ruth Niles uh, for the, the stoppers and any the other stainless steel parts like, it's because I can trust that lady is selling me what she has and is done right. Same way with my one way lathe and other people I talk about, Star Bond, because wood turners, we don't really all have to live to a budget. My budget is to buy it once, it better be right. Now this is just 50-50 depth sealer with lacquer thinner. And I'm just rubbing it in. And you see what I see. That is one awesome finish. I've still got a little dot right there. And I think it's compressed wood. And I'm hoping I can fix that. Or it might just be in the, where the, the... Remember this sat around for years and years and years on the center. But we're going to work with this. Now, if we say this top is ready, and it's almost ready, uh, I'm going to pull it off. Oh, uh, i got to hold my chuck because I sprayed that blow shield on the, on, the, on the threads of the chuck, and it moves easy now. I'm going to take it off, bring it over here and show you. See what I've got? That is an impression. I may have to put a little water on that and swell it up a little bit. Huh. Or I can just off camera spit on it. <laughs> it took me about six minutes according to the big hand clock on a wall. I went through and started back down at 180. And I buffed that spot a little bit after I wet it. How to wet it? Well, I'm, I'm told I'm not supposed to show you that I'll spit on it. Um, then I went back and, and took it all the way to 400. And now it's back down and I don't have that little dot. Now, people say, what's the big deal with a little dot? I don't need a reference to that I turned it. I turned it is the fact that it shows no tool marks, no cuts, no gouges, no markups and all. And right now it's still got a fairly soft finish, which is the, the CA on it. But it's ready to go to the next step. And that's what's next. I took the cap and put it in a safe place. Probably whip it off in five or ten minutes, but it's safe. I'm going to hollow this a little bit. Remember, it's only a little novelty jaw. And one of the next details, the next features we're going to do is we're going to put some gold leaf in it. I'm going to go over to Hobby Lobby and buy the glue. So we'll crank it up. Shields down. Sharp tool. Very sharp tool. I want to put a little depression in this piece. Now I've roughed it in with um, a little multi-tool and, and just, just to get some wood out of the way. Then I went to my no limit tool here. This is a Craftsman. Yeah, they're going to be rare because they're going to be out of business real soon. Put the shield on and I'm going to take this scraper. 
which I've sharpened to a negative rake slightly. All right, and I'm going to reshape this. Why do I like this tool? Look at the one I'm getting for shavings. Very fine, very delicate, very smooth, very, very clean cut. You can get this with carbide, you can get this with car high speed steel tools, but this one just happens to work out. It says high speed steel, but it's never acted like it. But this has just got a little bit of a burr on it, and it's just wrong to clean it up. What did I end up with? That's only scraper, not a scratch of sandpaper on it. This is just by scraper, and I did use that little cheeky, oxy cheeky. I bought a lathe, and the guy said I can get all the tools, and I went around the shop and picked up all the tools off the walls, and one of it was this little three-quarter inch or one inch scraper by Sears. I love it. I had it 20 years. All right, now I have no rings and marks in here. A little bit of pressure right there. And that's going to come out. Well, okay. Oh my God, what happened? Somebody spit on it. It's going to raise the wood a little bit. It's drying so fast I can wash it dry. That's beautiful. But that's going to puff up a little bit of that compressed fiber I had. And then I'm going to smooth it out. I'm going to smooth this out and then put some sealer on it. And that's going to be my flip back. And then i got to work from there. Now, I don't have a lot of shoulder on this, so jam shotgun's going to be a little bit of a challenge. But, hey, what the heck's wood turning without a challenge, right? All right. Now, I put in a coat of sealer. Just rubbed it in with my paper towel. Remember, I don't bring rags to the lathe, except the ones I'm wearing. I put a coat in it. I went around, and I went ahead and, and put it in the threads also. Then I took my airbrush and sprayed it back off. I don't want a buildup of anything in it, threads. I just want them nice and clean and sealed. So this piece is actually ready to flip around. Now I, I stopped to explain this because we're going to take a step on another video to fix this or improve this. And we'll see that that little ridge is, I, I can't touch it with this glove. But I don't have, it's a button, but it's it's sanded out to 400. It's pretty smooth. It's just compression. This is ready for the next step. Now, if it was torn a little bit, I would just keep adding a little sealer to it. I got a base. And then I'd coat it with OB Shine Juice and build up shellac to make it slick, slick, slick. You can do that. And that's slick, slick, slick. That's really slick. I don't hold it like this to shape this bottom. In fact, I want uh, this foot's going to go away because I'm not that deep. And then I'm going to shape this side off a little bit. And that'll be it. But when I do this bottom, I want to be able to do the finished dresses on it and make... That's it. Final touch. Okay? Got it? Got it. I didn't finish the story. This is a block that I have. For, it's a jam chuck for doing bracelets. And bracelets normally stop about here. That's so I can see from the wear marks on it. So I'm going to cut a tenon on this that will fit in here to hold it. That's what I'm going to do right now. Put the little tenon on. As I'm shaping this up to fit the cap, I'm getting close, close, close. I notice I've got a little bit of finish or CA or something on my tool rest and it's always good to have this thing slick as a butt. It really is. It just takes a second. You don't have to sand a lot. Just knock the bumps off to make sure your tool slides on this comfortably. If you got a, a ridge where it'll hang up, that hang up will be over there on that piece. So I got that. We're looking shape. Look at this. That's 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 a grab. All right, that'll hold. I'm going to reduce the shoulder a little bit so it doesn't wobble a lot. And then we're going to bring up the tailstock with the soft touch. Remember the soft touch. I have the jam chuck fitted. 
and I shaped the last bit of it using that Sears Craftsman scraper so I can do a little final cut. Now, you know, I could have done the same thing picking up my 10.7 um, millimeter radius square uh, from Black from Big Guy Productions. I could use the same thing with that and run around. But I had this. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you, you have to buy this, you have to buy that. If you have it, it'll work. I can put this on. Uh oh Now I've got to pick it up off the floor. Went and got it. Not a mark on it. Not a mark on it. That is proper planning because if I had vacuumed that floor like my wife wanted me to do and cleaned up all that crap below his, it would have hit concrete eventually. But because I had that nice cushion of shavings, see, no damage, no damage. Not beautiful, huh? All right, now, take one piece of tissue. Remember, I can sell you that tissue if you don't have any. Uh, or you can buy it yourself at Sam's. I'm going to put it here. I'm going to bring up the one, the, uh, the tailstock. Just get it close to being in place. Put a little bit of break on. Don't need a lot. Never need a lot with a one way. All right. And then I'm going to drop everything on the floor. No, I got it. Okay. I'm trying to get rid of something in my way. There. All right. I'm going to bring the touch, the soft touch up. And just put a little bit of pressure on it, then take a look at. Oh, I am so good. It's unbelievable how good I am. I am turning true as true can be because that fit looks pretty good on this. And the, the paper drives me crazy. You know? dip, 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 dip. Drive you nuts. All right, I've got the little piece of paper, the tissue. The tissue is to keep this wood from rubbing against this wood and creating a burnish. So if I was putting a really high-end finish on it, I wouldn't want that burnish to be there because it will change colors going through it or textures. So now I'm touching with the one touch. I'm holding here. I got a friction here. And the sky's that way. Okay, everything's all right? Yeah, we're all right now. I'll bring this up. Go over to the grinder and put a sharper edge on this tool. Sharper edge to start with. One more little quick review. Soft touch, finished piece, jam chuck, and I still hadn't gotten into the jam chuck where I can't use it for bracelets. I save all this crap, I mean, it's stuff. All right now, I'm going to crank it up, shields up, I'm bringing the speed up a little bit now. I'm running so true, this will allow me to make a smoother cut. Remember the same page thing? Can you see the little shadow right here? This is sealed. This is not. I don't want to touch the sealed because it matches up to my other one. So I'm cutting just about over to it. And when I rub it out, I'll rub out that little ridge. It's a very small ridge. And that side is done. Now I want to go across the bottom. That's why I have the soft touch on. If I'm going across this bottom to make contact with my revolving center, I'm going to make contact with steel. But look. No steel. Wood. I can cut this and I tighten it up a little bitty bit, put a little more pressure on it so I don't move. I don't shift. Alright, ask me, how do you control that? Can you get in any closer? Watch the tool. I'm driving that cutter by twisting my wrist. See the little cuts I'm getting? 
I mean, that is perfect cut. I'm going to stop right at real time. Stop. Real time. It just ain't like those things where they, they, they fix it and then they show you. That's what we just cut. Do you see it? I, I didn't get on his shoulder right here. That's what I didn't get. I got to clean this up and polish that off. But when you're cutting like that, you're cutting with this tool to where it comes in and you roll it around, you, you roll it close, get the start and then open it up. Then when you get the cut, you can control the cut because you're rotting this bevel. That's where this arm comes in at. Everything else happens right here in the wrist. You can turn it on, turn it off, all of it in the wrist. There's a switch on it. Right there, the switch. Yeah. I'll get people ask me what a switch is at. We had a camera glitch. It didn't go on when I wanted it to go on. I was cutting off that little root bottom and I was using this little this little uh, parting tool type thing. It's in a rig. Somebody, Robert Sorby makes this. I think it says 6 millimeter, But it's a great little detail tool. And I eased that piece off. And I thought you were watching as I did it. And it got really, really nice. And now, everything that's holding this in place right now is habit. And, and I, I, although I love habit, I got some bad ones. Um, I think I can hold it enough with good luck and charm. I'm running low on that. Get this back out the way. I can get in here now. Turn my tool rest a little bit. Get the right position on it and take my scraper and clean it up a little bitty bit and remember I'm friction held right now if I get hard with it we get to pick it up off the floor again got it got it let's crank her up oh I'm gonna take my stone and sharpen up this working at this very slowly look at the shavings We sand up to 400. Now, if you're into where you have to put lines and marks and all that on the bottom, shield up. It gives you guidance for when you want to write your name between them or the product or the date or the number or whatever. Um, do it after the sanding. You don't want to sand the ridges out and make this not as beautiful. Now, this is ready for sealer. I think it looks pretty good. Just buffing in one more coat of sealer on it. The beauty of the sealer, and use the depth 50 50 because I can build it up. And I'll build up a nice finish. Then I put what I want over the top of it. Like if I, I'm going to eventually end up with uh, super glue with this. But look, this is friction held. Isn't that sweet? No lines, no burnishes. I can rub this out with a little bit of Scotch Brite. Here's my Scotch Brites. Rub any marks on it, then come right. They come right off. That's ready for the next step, which we're going to get into in another video. But this little jar, and I get asked a lot about this, why don't we turn something big or unique or whatever? We did. We did turn something big, and we did turn something unique. And we used a, a, a roughing gouge, a skew, a parting tool, a 3 8 bowl gouge, a scraper, uh, did I say parting tool? Yeah, did that. Sanded it with five grits of paper. Took a one-way, I mean, a, 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 a scotch Bright cloth to it. I have no noticeable joint. The side's slick. The finish matches both of them because we were careful with it. 
we made a revolving center. I showed you the benefit of, a, of making your own a disc sander. Uh, we talked about a few other things in the shop. And the reason we're doing this, I have to. I am the guy that had a part of his brain removed and had to come back from zero. I'm the guy that's, when I asked the people at the clinic, are you going to teach me how to walk? And the guy honestly told me, that's not, not, that's not in our important role. We're just to keep you from getting worse. To me, getting worse was not walking. So I took it on the step. We, I don't walk so good, but I walk and I'm all right. But I can do this. You can too. I'm sitting on a stool. They say you can't do that. I don't know who they are, but they say you can't do that. Uh, I'm in the shop with a little electric, a little, little gas heater out there to warm it up a little bit in the morning. I got all these things going, and they said you can't do that. You can do this. You can. And if you need my help in any way at all, give me a call. The number's at the end of the tape. It just send that in one of the ends. The phone number's there. Call me. Let's talk. Let's go through this. Make sure we got all the kinks worked out. And then if you do something nice, send me a picture to captainettycastellan at gmail.com. That little address right there. captainettycastellan at gmail.com. And, uh, and it's C-A-P-N, nettycastellan at gmail.com. Hey, you know. Uh, but that's it. This little ring jar be really nice. We're going to take it one more step because... There's another thing we can do to improve this, and it's a skill you can develop and move into other pieces. We'll talk about that more next time we get together to make shavings. I'm Captain Eddie Castle, and we've been making shavings. Yeah, this is, I really like this. Hand threaded. That was what we did two, two videos ago. Did the hand threading. Get the joints right. The, the lines are right. There's no bumps and ridges and seams. Oh, I love this. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Boy, I'm so good on a grain match. It's unbelievable right now. You can't see it because it's going to be closer, but trust me, it's there. <laughs>